eight or ten or twelve or five people here. This is, and it's a little ironic that I'm the guy that's up here talking and I'm the guy that didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I caused it. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. And uh, I've met, I don't know how many doctors in the last month and one day, and every one of them has told me there's no reason that I'm alive right now. They said what I had, if I, one doctor said if I'd been sitting in her office waiting for an appointment when this happened, I had a 5% chance of living. Never mind the fact that I was seven and a quarter miles away from a starting line in a race. What saved me was, from what I understand, when I went down, I don't remember the five or 10 minutes before, and I didn't wake up for four and a half days afterwards. What I have been finding out a little bit almost every day, when I went down, I apparently almost fell on a nurse. And it's Christina over here. And uh, she was one of the first ones there. And then Bob and Tina just happened to be driving by and they stopped. And that was the beginning of the chain that the chief was talking about. And the artery turned out it was completely blocked. I had no notice of it ahead of time. There was no symptoms when I was training. I had no reason to know this was going to happen. I'm 61. That should happen to old people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'm an old people. <laughs> uh, like I said, the fact that I'm up here is a little strange because every one of you should be up here. I'm glad you're being recognized. I'd like to thank the mayor, the council, and the city manager for doing that. And I guess I am old because I found out when you write your notes with your reading glasses on and then you try to read them without it, <laughs> you have a lot of trouble figuring out what you're supposed to say. But uh, the, uh, the people that ran the race, everybody that stopped and helped, uh, the medical people, the police department, the sheriff. I owe you guys big time. I mean, I'm a retired state trooper in Illinois. And you can go to work for 300 days a year and nobody pays attention. You can even do really good stuff for 300 days a year and nobody pays attention. You screw up one time and you make the front page of every paper and it's on YouTube. Uh, you guys did not screw up. You, you did everything that could have been done, and I was so glad to see that the media picked up on it and that you guys got the credit. They used my name more than they should and your names less than they should, but you guys are what makes the country, the city, the county, everything work. It, it's all of you guys. It's, all I did was probably cost five or six or seven runners six to ten minutes in a <laughs> And I sincerely hope that I didn't cost any of you any age group medals. <laughs> because that would have been my biggest contribution was if I actually cost you guys some age group medals. And uh, I don't know, I mean, I'm finding out every day different things that happen. I just found out today there was a fire truck there. Well, how would I have known that? I wasn't doing anything at that particular moment. So again, uh, like I said, this isn't as exciting as the conquistador. And uh, the guy that said he moved slow, I actually wasn't moving at all, so I'm not excited. <laughs> but on behalf of my wife, Patricia, where'd you go? Right here. <coughs> she, she sat in that hospital for four days waiting for me to wake up. And uh, you know, for her, the nurses at the hospital, especially Nurse Ping, who I don't know because she was off when I woke up, but for her, she sat there for four days waiting for this to happen. So I'd like to give her a hand. <laughs> and uh, on behalf of my wife, my son, and my two granddaughters, thank you. We do appreciate it. It's all because of you guys. Thank you very much.